Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna discuss our new tool room machining centers and the differences between using them in tool room ops or in production ops. So with the tracking uh, hand wheels and things like that, we actually have the ability to run it in tool room ops where I'm the tool changer and I would use the hand wheels for tracking or machining or using it manually. And I, uh, and I do all the tool changes myself and all that kind of stuff. Now I can also go around and take the same program, add the tools into the ATC, and then be able to just push and play and let it make production parts one after another. So that's kind of what we're gonna show you how it all works. So to get you started, what I'm going to do is show you that here on the panel, we've got a key that says tool room and production ops, right? So in the tool room ops, which is where I'm gonna start out, this allows you to run it pretty much like a DPM, although you can have it enclosed still, use flood coolant and use the doors uh, to keep yourself clean and dry, but you don't have to, you can actually run it with it open, okay? So what I'm going to do first, I'm gonna to explain to you what my job is that I'm doing here. And so I've got a small block of aluminum in my first vise, and I've already got my zeros and stuff set up. And what we're gonna do actually is we gotta drill a couple of holes, we gotta make some small pockets and clean the part up and make it look good. And so this would be my test part. As you can see here on the screen, what my part looks like, I've got a rectangular part that right now, the material is all oversized. And so I'm going to face off the top of the part, then I'm going to cut the outside of it. And then the last thing I'm going to do is do the circular pockets and then counter, use a counter sink to chamfer all the corners and make it look real good. So you can tell when I walk through the program right here, that you can see the rectangle there and you see the two circles. It's all pretty simple on what we're gonna to try to do here, okay? But before I can do any of that, normally what would happen is I'd make my program and then I gotta think about the tools and how I'm gonna use it. The new uh, machines also have the ability to either do your tool setup just like you do in a DPM uh, with the tool center inside the machine off of an indicator or a one, two, three block, however you prefer. Um, but you can also purchase the tool setter device and see how to do it actually in there. Now I've got all my tools set up, except one right here. I've got a three quarter inch end mill in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how I got the Z axis offset to be done. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna go over to my tool cart right now. So when I have the tool setter, the way that it works is it's basically got a vernier caliper on it and it comes with a tool setting device. I can use this in the machine or I can use it in the tool setter. So all I would do here is set my standard in here, turn the scale on, bring it down to the top and zero it out. Then for each individual tool, all I have to do is take that specific tool, in this case, my three quarter inch end mill, put it in the same holder, touch it off the top, look at that number and punch it in right here like so. And I would do that for every one of the tools one by one, but I've already done that to save us some time, okay? All right, so now that you have an idea on how the tool setup part works, I'm just gonna close that page and I'm gonna explain a little, some of the things that you can do. I've got four tools in my program and my last tool is actually a center drill or a chamfer tool. And I've got it in the spindle right now. And what I want to do is I want to show you some of the other features of how things work. And one of them is if I go to the DRO mode, because I've got the electronic hand wheels and everything else, we've got a feature in here that's called go to. And when I have the go to feature, I can use it for simple stuff. Like I got to drill two little center drilled holes in here and I know where they got to go. And I don't feel like adding them to the program right now. So here's a feature that will allow you to put an electronic stop in each of the axes and the hand wheels will stop when they get there. So I know that in here, my X position is gonna be one inch. Okay, my Y position is gonna be minus 0.75. And my Z position is gonna be minus one eighth. So you'll see that those numbers are all right here in this green bar. And what's gonna happen when I walk over to the machine is I'm gonna turn it on, I'm gonna dial it down to actually drill those holes, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you two ways. So first of all, I'm gonna open the doors so you can see where I'm at in here. You see my center drills in here and you'll see that when I have the electronic hand wheels, I can just move them and put them wherever I need. So I'm gonna to try to move them over here a little bit so that the camera can see what I'm trying to do right here. 
And here I'm going to go, I'm in DRO mode, right? And I'm just going to turn on my spindle. And then I'm just going to move it over here to where I want a machine. So this works just like it would with any manual machine, right? And there's two ways to do this. I can use these hand wheels and the Z hand wheel, or I can turn on the ones on the panel here and also do it with this. Now I prefer to use these because I'm used to the way they are on the DPMs. So I'm going to do it that way, but I want to show you that when I want to do something like drill a hole, my Z axis, I can actually pull out here and make it much easier to use it. Okay. So I'm going to put my X position where it is and I'm going to bring my Y in the rest of the way. You'll see it right there. And now I'm just going to dial this thing down here to drill this hole. So I'm going to drill a hole right here. You'll see that when it gets to its full depth, even though I'm turning the handle, it's done. So the only other thing I got to do is I'm going to change my X to three inches. And that's going to allow me to dial over here to the other hole and then drill that hole the same way. When I'm done, simply push this out of the way. And in this case, I can just shut off the spindle. So that's going to give you an idea on how one of the features works in here for something simple like that. I don't need to make a program, just use the do ones for that kind of stuff. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got my program all ready to go, but what I need to do is I'm going to make the part by hand. Okay. So I'm going to switch to the run mode and I'm going to push start. And in here, you're going to see that it says at least one of my tools isn't set yet. Okay. That's because I forgot to do it. So what I got to do next is I've got a program and you'll notice when I look in here that I've got a whole bunch of tools that I've already set up, but in my actual program, it's saying, what are those tools going to be that you're going to use? Okay. And the way that I'm using my program right now, my first tool is this tool number 101. Okay. So I'm going to take that tool. And I'm going to say, that's going to be my tool number one. All right. Uh, my tool number two is actually going to be tool number 102. All right, so let me go find that. It's right here. That's tool number, or, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, that's right. Tool number two. And then tool number three is going to be my 3A send mill. So that's this one right here. And last but not least, tool number 105 is actually my chamfer tool that's in there right now, but I need to tell it that's what I'm going to use. So that's tool number four. And you'll see now when I look up here, that my tools are all set except for the second one, right? So my second tool right here, uh, I must have missed that one when I did it. And there you go, you see all the tools are set up. Now something else I want to explain to you the way the tool setup works now is if I've got the exact same tool in two different places, you'll see there's going to be a red box around them, which means these tools are synced. They know that the tool that's in here is also the tool that's in your library. And last but not least, you'll see in the middle it says ATC tools. So in a little bit later part of this, I'm going to show you how to assign my tools from my library into my ATC so it can run in production mode. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to the run mode and in here I'm going to push start, right? And then after it calculates the tool path, it's going to tell me when you're ready, push go. So I'm going to push go and it's going to go to the home position and it's going to tell me to put the first tool in here, which is a three inch face mill, start the spindle and make the parts. So just like a DPM, I'm just going to move over here take out tool number four and put in tool number one. Okay, I'm going to start my spindle, hit the tracking mode, and I'm going to dial it forward. So I've got a couple face mill events in here, which you can tell if I'm using tracking, it's just going to allow me to cut right through it. If I wanted to run it in CNC run mode, all I'd have to do is push stop CNC run and it'll make it by itself like so. So just like with any of our DPM products, I have the ability to switch back and forth from tracking to CNC run because I'm in tool room ops. It's telling me to change tools, take tool number one out, put tool number two in, start my spindle. If I want to use tracking, I can like so. I just want to make sure it's in the right place. I'm going to actually let it go. Once again, it's going to tell me to change tools. So what I'm doing is I'm using one of our new features, which is called helical drilling. 
So I'm going to actually drill these circle pockets by using an end mill, okay? I'm not using any coolant right now, so I'm running it a little bit slower than I normally would. So I'm gonna go to tracking, turn on my spindle. Let's make sure we're in the right place. Looks like it's good there to me, so I'm just gonna go to CNC run and let it run. Okay, I got one more tool. So I'm gonna go back to my original tool, which is my chamfer tool. And I'm gonna go back to tracking, turn the spindle on, just bring it down, make sure I'm in the right place. Certainly looks like I am. Okay, so as you can see, using it like a DPM machine, you still won't have as much of a mess because you can contain all the chips. You can use flood coolant if you need to. And so what I would do normally, if this was my prototype, I would check and make sure that I've got everything right, tweak anything that I have to do to make a few changes in there. And then the next thing I would do is I would set this up for production, right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the key and I'm gonna to switch from tool room to production ops. So that means now I'll be able to use the tool changer and some of those other things, okay? So I'm gonna switch modes right here because what I wanna do next is I wanna add the tools the way that they need to be in there, okay? And I'm also gonna make some changes to my program. So here in my program, what I wanna do is I wanna go to the very beginning and before I start, I wanna actually insert an event. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an auxiliary event in here and this is gonna tell it to automatically turn on the coolant, okay? So that's the first thing. And then at the very end of the program, I'm gonna add another aux event. And what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm gonna put in the part change position so that the table comes forward for me to change tools or change parts, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's the changes to my program. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna show how to assign the tools that I have in here into the ATC. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the tool that's in the spindle, which is tool number 105, and I'm gonna add a library tool or an ATC tool number. So I'm gonna say this is gonna go in position number five, and it'll tell you manually load the tool in the spindle, which it's already in there, so just say yes. Okay, and then it's gonna tell me close the doors and push go. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to do that with all four tools. So let's put in tool number one. Close the door. Come down here and find my face mill. Say that's gonna go in position number one. It tells me to load it. I tell it I did. Push go. Same process for the last two tools. This is my three quarter inch end mill right here. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to that one. Tell it that's tool number two. Yes, I put it in there. Go. Tool number three, yes, it's in there. 
and go. So the next thing that I wanna show you is how the tool uh, library and everything has changed. So here's my library tools, but you notice I just assigned them. Well, if I push this little arrow right here, you'll see that my ATC tools now opens up and it shows me all the tools and the locations that they're in in the ATC, which is what I just did. So now what I gotta do is I gotta take the tools from the ATC and replace the ones in the program with them so it knows where to go find them. So I'm just gonna start off by saying my face mill is tool number one. Right, my finish end mill is tool number two. Right, my uh, three ace end mill is tool number three. And then my actual countersink, which is here in position number five, is actually going to be tool number four. Okay, so that gives me all of my tools set up in here correctly. Right, and now I got a couple more things to do. Okay, so so the next thing I want to do is I want to make this part in CNC mode. Okay. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm gonna actually go into here and turn on the automatic cooling. So you'll see if you hold that button for a few seconds, that light will come on that says auto, which means it's gonna turn on when the aux function tells it to, all right? And I'm just gonna change parts real quick so you can see this happen. Okay, so we're gonna close the doors because they have to be closed in production ops. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the run mode and we're gonna push start. And then once it calculates again, it's gonna tell me when you're ready, push go. I'm gonna use tracking just to get started. So I'm gonna turn the hand wheel. It's gonna go get tool number one. And then as I dial it down here, it's gonna turn on the coolant. It looks like I'm right where I want to be, so I'm just going to let it run from here on out. So CNC run, push go. Okay, so now that you know a little bit more about our new tool room machining centers, what's the next step going to be for you? I would suggest you either check us out here on social media, or better yet, check our website, which is trackmt.com. Or the best solution would be call your local track rep, tell them you saw this video and you want to learn a little bit more. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, just push this button over here. And if you'd like to watch the next video in line, just push the button over here. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, remember to keep on tracking.